Welcome everyone. We waited um, a few minutes once we uh, opened the start of this um, special ge uh, general orientation for um, attendees to our meeting so that many of you can join. It's one of those portal issues that not everybody can come in all at the same time. Uh, so that we've um, allowed for quite a quite a number of you to join before we've opened. The agenda was posted. Um, I will make some brief introductory remarks with my colleague also on the screen with me, Robert Smith, our director of meetings and our ASL uh, interpreter. We also have live closed captioning. And for those who wish to see the... Uh, written words, there's a pull-up screen, uh, live transcript at the right-hand corner of the Zoom uh, broadcast. I am Felice Levine, and whether you are a member or not, I love these opportunities to meet up with persons in our field, ostensibly for this session, attendees at our meeting, or those perhaps thinking about attending the AERA 2021 virtual meeting. We've been doing quite a number of these sessions. It's a wonderful opportunity to connect um, in the live mode with those who are um, just attending the meeting, uh, with those who are attending and presenting in one mode or another. Some are presenting papers at paper sessions or roundtables or poster sessions or in symposia or in invited kinds of opportunities. For all of you, these live opportunities for us in no way, or all of the uh, uh, scheduled opportunities that we've posted are in no way to signal the complexity of what we are doing. <laughs> it is actually quite user-friendly, accessible, dynamic and interactive. And in a way these unfoldings in our aspirations, set the view for the culture of collaboration, communication, and access that we have sought to provide in the 2021 virtual annual meeting. This particular session is really going to zero in on whether you're doing other kinds of things, whether you are an exhibitor, whether you are uh, giving a paper, uh, or whether you're uh, doing some form of invited session. Everyone is an attendee. The platform that we have selected um, was oriented and is oriented to being a user-friendly, accessible environment that you will want to come to each day and not just pop in and out for your session or the one or two things that you want to hear. You will have no URLs that you have to save in your calendar and wonder about which one, which one do I use when I'm presenting and which one do I use when I'm attending and where did it go because I missed saving it when I got the invite. None of that happens in this environment. It is as close as we could get to your walking in or arriving at, um, let's call it a convening center, the AERA uh, annual virtual platform, coming to an island together or a satellite together. And once you come in, it is extremely intuitive uh, for you to move from one place to another and to have what you want, including your being able to contact old friends, um, as you might through a text message, but you'll be able to do that all in the platform and decide to meet up. We hope you'll decide to meet up in all the free space we've created when there aren't substantive sessions, but you know, like any annual meeting, if you're having a session fatigue and just wanna hang out with um, former students, prior mentors, um, persons you went to college with, you could, contact them and drop out of a session and uh, get together really as we're getting together. You can do it by written chat or you'll be able to do it um, by video chat. I do not mean in any sense in saying that to um, scoop 
what is the center central focus of um, uh, this uh, this session, and that is attendee. We call it the attendee training session. But training should not be viewed as off-putting. It is not complex. We could have said the the attendee welcoming session to our environment, so that each of you um, maximizes the opportunities to the extent that you wish. Uh, and this is an introduction um, to that. There will be other general orientation. We had one last Friday that will be posted later today. We have another general orientation this coming Friday that will, um, uh, that will be live and then rebroadcast. We will have a two sessions that are special training uh, devoted to those who are chairs, um, uh, discussants or presenters in a paper session at a round table or in any form of um, <clears throat> any form of a symposia or symposia like session. And that I, uh, the first one is on Thursday. Uh, they're all posted on the website. And the second one is, I believe, next Monday. Again, the reason why we're not just doing pre records. And even why we didn't pre-record the meeting. Maybe some of you have gone to a pre-recorded annual meeting. You've got to watch the pre-record in advance. If you're a presenter, after you've done the pre-record, then there's a scheduled time for you to come back live. And so it's multiple efforts and not very dynamic or interactive because, of course, the discussion doesn't happen spontaneously. It happens in segmented set pieces. Um, so uh, I think we've hit upon a model that will work. No model is perfect, uh, but it is one where our partners uh, in this uh, uh, platform have sought uh, and it's uh, aspired and are inspired by what AERA uh, uh, seeks to do. Uh, this year, um, with all of our attention to um, access to persons with disabilities in the past. It is a special focal point of our attention for the virtual meeting and for place-based meetings uh, that unfold thereafter. So if I can ask Bidut for you to pick up the agenda for the moment again, it was kind of the screen share as you uh, joined. It is posted in chat. Uh, and it will be reposted uh, in chat. Um, but the key part of this is the walkthrough with our colleagues of the Scarrett group who will introduce themselves uh, uh, to the virtual platform and the attendee experience we're aiming to provide with a nice opportunity for uh, live Q&A. Uh, no question will go unanswered. Those that are unanswered in the Q&A, uh, we will synthesize and use this the basis for not only the planning of our next session like this, but, but also for you know, facts at a glance sheets and, and reminders and, and other pointers that might help. And then we have asked uh, our uh, uh, disabilities consultant, Emily uh, Bitkist from the uh, uh, Paul Longmore Institute on Disability, to speak to the attendee uh, experience and provisions being made starting today at, uh, starting actually quite a number of months ago, but starting today with uh, access at AERA.net. If there's something that we haven't accounted for uh, in terms of what you will hear from uh, uh, Emily, um, that email box uh, will be a, uh, uh, spot for you to uh, land and uh, uh, give us uh, more information about um, specific uh, uh, specific provisions that are not the broad general ones that we we hope we've already anticipated uh, and are provided. So those are the kind of key, I guess you'd say, um, emphases of this event. We know that lots of people have lots of other questions and, and we want to be able to entertain them, I'll say, without being distracted by them. Uh, there are a couple of things I do want to emphasize, and that is that um, uh, for those of you who are um, interested and we encourage use 
of the interactive presentation gallery that can um, uh, that can home PowerPoints, if you will, that can home Prezi, if you will, and other modalities of presenting. Um, there are many important reasons for you to take advantage of the opportunity of creating an interactive presentation and being part of that gallery. We're going to return to further discussion of that in a session on Wednesday. And if you are a worldwide attendee getting, getting up at some inconvenient time uh, of day in your day at this moment, uh, we are doing that at 6 a.m. Eastern Savings Time on Thursday morning so that our hundreds of persons, um, in particular in uh, Asia and Australia, can um, uh, can have a uh, the opportunity of a live session. Anyone else would like to get up at six in the morning with us? We we welcome uh, welcome you uh, to that event. When you are presenting, you will be able to, as our colleagues at Scarrett um, will will illustrate today. When you are uh, when you are presenting, they will only illustrate it briefly because this is the attendee perspective. You will you will um, um, view or hear that a paper presenter uh, uh, can either present in there, can present in without pulling anything up, but if you want to pull up your PowerPoint or your Pressy, or if anybody's sitting around with old transparencies, you can bring, and a reader uh, to display it on, uh, on a screen, you can bring up your old transparencies, and that would be something you would you would um, share screen from your desktop if you are sharing your own, let's call it PowerPoint. Uh, <clears throat> if you have located your PowerPoint in the gallery or have created your presentation in the gallery, you will also pull it up as a tab in advance on your browser. One way or the other, it is just like opening a tab on a browser or opening a document on your desktop. There really is no functional difference. Uh, uh, and I think uh, because we did not have general orientations before our first, uh, our first introduction to the uh, interactive presentation gallery uh, last uh, Monday, uh, there's been somewhat of a confusion even between the platform and the gallery. So I just hope briefly to say um, if you are still wondering about all of that, um, we can take individual emails, individual discussions and conversations, and we invite you to the next uh, two sessions or seeing some of the pre-recordings. We had introduced the interactive presentation gallery, um, what we thought was going to be for our first virtual meeting last April. When that meeting was canceled, we offered presenters an opportunity to experiment and create uh, an interactive presentation. We had two town hall meetings about going virtual last August and two demonstrations in September, on September 15th and 22nd, about creating an interactive presentation and how you can even use your PowerPoints in that modality, if you choose to do so. Uh, for those of you who, who did not choose to do so, which is most of you um, who will be attending the meeting, 450 of your colleagues did, and it is a, uh, um, an asset on the AERA uh, website for those authors who did so, and who can continue to network worldwide with scholars who have similarly situated interests. Uh, with that, let me uh, turn this over to our director, Robert Smith, who will say some introductory remarks and then we'll turn it over to Scarrett. Robert? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us. In 24 short days, we'll be convening virtually uh, on, the, on our virtual platform for the annual meeting. We're very excited. We uh, have not been with you uh, since Toronto in 2019. We uh, missed you last year, so we're looking forward to coming together. Uh, 
And we know that this is going to be a different kind of meeting. Uh, it's going to be a more interactive meeting than you've probably done since um, online. Uh, the platform that you're gonna see today is, is very dynamic, very interactive, uh, provides you with many opportunities um, to recreate that experience of running into somebody in the hallway and setting up a, a quick time to chat and also uh, be very interactive as you watch the sessions and, and view the content. So with no further ado, I will uh, say thank you. Uh, if you've not registered, please do. A little commercial there. And uh, with that, I will turn it back to Felice. All right. Well, I, I think the, uh, unless, uh, unless Tony, you're seeing an absolutely burning Q&A in the Q&A, we want to encourage you to use the Q&A. The chat is available to, for you to communicate with the panelists. We uh, do not have the live chat function on because it interferes with access and access and inclusivity is a priority of AERA for many, many years. And we are more fully understanding how to best do that, uh, particularly in a virtual environment. So please use the Q&A. If there's something you wanna generally raise that's not a question, but you think is an important general issue, you can post it there and we will uh, seek to be as responsive and uh, to what we're seeing as, uh, as possible. Tony, is there any burning issue or can I turn it over to our colleagues in this Garrett group? I think we should move into the demonstration. Okay, Let, let's go. We'll turn it over. Asia, will you do the introductions of, uh, and then you and uh, 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 Rachel? Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. We are excited to be here again. Um, my colleague, Rachel, is going to um, demonstrate uh, an overview of our platform. And as Felice mentioned, that will be uh, focused on uh, a more general experience um, as an attendee. We will touch on some elements um, regarding how you would present. Um, but just a general note, um, as Felice did touch on earlier, um, the presentations, anything that you are creating will not be housed in this platform. So if you are a presenter and as you're watching this presentation today, um, just keep that in mind that you will screen share um, whichever uh, you know, type of platform you have built your presentation um, as we go through what you're about to see today. So. Um, another note on questions, we do have a colleague of ours that is going to be monitoring the question box and we'll get to as many questions as we can um, during the presentation, but if you can hold any questions, um, we will try to get to as many of them um, at the end of our demonstration today. And uh, please, if we don't get to a question, please know that we are working quickly to develop um, some FAQs, some best practices, um, so that as you go into uh, your first virtual conference, um, you, you'll have all of the information that you need. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my colleague, Rachel. She is the project manager here with Scarrett Group, and she will be walking you through the demonstration today. Thank you, Asia. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel, and I'm going to share my screen and walk you through the virtual conference center highlighting a few areas that we feel are most important to share with you today. So the screen I have up right now is what your login window is going to look like. It's going to have in the center of the screen, a place for you to enter your email and password. This information will be sent to you via email and it will also let you know what date you are able to access the platform. So be on the lookout for that in the next few weeks. We'll click login and the next page is going to be the landing page of our conference center. This is going to host key pieces of content that AERA chooses to share with the attendees. So this may be content related to the conference itself or to AERA as a whole. The bottom middle tile will say click to enter and that's going to take you into the lobby. The lobby of our virtual conference center replicates that of a lobby of a hotel. So 
On this screen, you'll see that there are two toolbars, one at the top and one at the bottom. We're going to focus on these as they will be your key pieces of navigation through the conference center. At the top, we will focus on today's events, upcoming events, and announcements. And at the bottom, the map, who's here, chat, profile, and help. So starting with the bottom toolbar, there's an icon that will say map. All these pins on the map are going to represent a room in the virtual conference center, and we will click into some of these in just a moment. Moving over to the right-hand side of the bottom toolbar is an icon that says who's here. Clicking who's here will show you every attendee that's currently logged into the virtual conference center, and you can do a few things with this page. From here, you can decide if you would like to share your contact information with a particular attendee. So to do that, you'll locate their name. And on the far right side, there's an icon that looks like a manila folder. Clicking that is going to allow you to click share contact information. And through this platform, you'll be able to share your email and name with this particular attendee. The recipient of your contact information, their contact will stay private until they choose to share it with you. Another icon on this right hand side are two message bubbles. Clicking this is going to start a private one on one chat with that particular attendee. So not only can you text chat with this person, but you can also call them or start a video chat using your computer audio. So I will demonstrate what that looks like here. I can call my colleague Asia. You can hear it and see that the call is coming through. When she responds, it'll open a window in the center of your screen. So that's one example of how to do private messages and phone calls. If I close out of who's here and in the bottom toolbar, open the icon that says chat, you'll see that in the same location of your screen at the bottom, a chat message pops up. This is going to be a public group chat. This chat option is in every single pin on the map in the virtual conference center. So depending on which room you're in, that'll be that room's group conversation. So anything shared in this window is public. You do also have the option of starting phone calls and video calls in these public chats, and it will look a little bit different. If you click on that phone or video, it's going to generate a link in the body of that message, and anyone that clicks that link can join your phone call or video call. You may choose to start your own group conversation. So you may not want it to be fully public to everybody in that room, and you may want to chat with more than one person. So to do so, you locate the chat bar in the bottom right corner of your screen. And when that opens up, there's going to be an icon that looks like a new message. It's going to have a little pencil on a square. If you click that, you can click on new group, and you'll have the option to name your own group, decide if it's going to be private or public, and then from there you can add whichever attendees you'd like to that conversation. The next icon in the bottom toolbar that we will review is the profile. Clicking on the profile will allow you to edit your information. Once you register, the information that you use for your first and last name, as well as your pronoun, is going to be auto-filled in here, but they are customizable fields. You also have the op option to upload your profile photo, and there's a checkbox on this screen that you can select to share your contact information. So going back to that who's here demonstration we just did with the manila folder, if you would like to share your contact information with any attendees, you will want to check this box here that says I want to share my contact information. The last icon in the bottom toolbar that we'll look at right now is the help icon. This is also on the right hand side of the toolbar. Clicking this icon will have a lot of information, including our email at Scarit Group if you have any technical questions that come up during the conference. 
So back in the lobby, we're going to move up to the top toolbar. And the first part we're going to review is today's events. Today's events is going to show you every live session taking place that day. And then there's an icon or a tab rather that says upcoming events. These will be events that are taking place in the following days of the conference. You'll see that on the screen next to each of the live session titles, there is an icon that says add. If you choose to add a session, it's going to appear in your My Schedule. So there's going to be quite a few live sessions that you can participate in for this particular conference. So we encourage you to come into the platform a few days before it goes live and build your schedule so you can organize it a bit and condense exactly how many sessions are appearing. It'll be easier for you to navigate once the conference is live. So if you add a particular item to your schedule, clicking the My Schedule tab from the agenda window will show you all the ones that you have added. And if you choose to not participate, you can always remove it, but it won't make a difference whether you're able to participate or not. One other option you have is parting each things, which will add it to your favorites. So on the right-hand side, there's an image of a heart with a plus sign that will put it in your favorites. This will also apply to content related to the exhibit boost, which we will dive into, or any documents that may be uploaded into the platform. It doesn't only relate to the live sessions, but if you choose to add anything to your favorites, Back down in the bottom toolbar on the left-hand side, there's an icon of a heart that says favorites, and anything that you click on to add to your favorites will appear here. So just another organizational tool that you can choose to use. While you're working on building your schedule, you will have the option to filter the agenda. You can filter it by the date and time, and you can also filter it by the type of session it is, whether it be a paper session, a symposium, et cetera. And then another tab in this window we'd like to review is the announcements tab. The announcements tab is going to be represented by a graphic that takes up the center window of your screen. AERA will be announcing a few different items throughout the conference. So we encourage you to check here daily for any information that they choose to share. So now that we've gone over a little bit on the toolbars, both the top and the bottom, we're going to click into a couple different Rachel. pins on the map. Rachel. So we're going to go back down to the bottom toolbar and open the map and locate the exhibit hall pin. The exhibit hall pin is towards the left-hand side of the map. And when you click on a pin, it's going to take you into that room of the virtual conference center. There aren't currently any exhibit halls populated in the exhibit hall yet, but on the day of the conference, there will be. So there will be an option to click into the directory and all the exhibit booths will be represented in a tile view in the center of your screen. Once you click into the exhibit booth, there will be posters and videos that you can click on to view their content and you will have the ability to communicate with the exhibit hall employees or representatives during the live conference hours. We're going to open the map once more and locate the presentation gallery, which is in the center of the map. The presentation gallery is going to have the, um, a tile or image that you can click on to enter the iPoster gallery. So I did see a couple comments come through already with questions from presenters on whether or not you need to submit your PowerPoint or your iPoster presentation. The answer is it would be beneficial to you. So you will be able to present your poster live in the conference. Uh, but Rachel, if you maybe, want to... Rachel, maybe I better clarify that. Uh, right the, ahead. Uh, the gallery is an asset for those who are giving papers, whether in round tables, poster sessions, um, or paper sessions. It is an option with tremendous advantage that we will cover in more detail uh, uh, 
as we did last Monday in Wednesday and Thursday's session. Um, when you are presenting, as I said in my introduction, if you choose not to use that, you can use nothing, you can use Prezi, you can use PowerPoint or whatever you may wish. Uh, if you choose to have your presentation in the gallery, it is available throughout the meeting and others can contact you, you can contact others and you bring it to your live presentation in the same share screen mode. One is taking it from, let's say it's PowerPoint, you take it from your desktop. The other is opening a, uh, uh, another window in your web browser, but you control either. And those are the questions that we can take up more, more on uh, Wednesday and Thursday when we have dedicated sessions around how do you do your presentation. We want not this not to um, sort of distract from that so that even though most persons who are uh, attending may also be presenting in one way or another or chair or being a discussion or a commentator. This is about the attendee part of the experience. So while I, Rachel, briefly have the, uh, the, the I suppose, the microphone here. Um, uh, uh, when uh, Rachel was presenting and she showed you all the ways you can schedule, it is much like the app. <laughs> Gone are the days of the print program. We actually, by vote of council, a um, year and a half ago, we were not going to have a print program in 2020. We were gonna have a fax at a glance hangout. Um, but the app that, that has been used successfully since 2013, and those are increasingly relied on it. This is your app, not on your cell phone, but your app. Um, that you will be creating and seeing uh, or viewing from all of the filters that, um, that Rachel described. The top one that is now called agenda, will, will, the name will change to be call, called schedule, something you're more familiar with in all academic or in our prior app. That agenda is the entire schedule for the meeting and you will be able to search by unit, SIG, section, uh, every day, all the keywords, it will, look, it will look and feel similar to, except more functional, because you can then move it into your schedule and all you do is, is uh, on the left, I think you, is it right, Rachel? You uh, activate the arrow and you get to that location. No trying to figure out whether it's on level one or level three, or I don't even know which hotel, which hotel or level of a convention center I'm at. When, you, when something is in the main schedule or if you create a my schedule, you as an attendee go there uh, by virtue of hitting an arrow, not looking for a URL. Rachel. That's correct. Thank you, Felice, for clarifying. So now that we've clicked into the top toolbar and open today's events once more, we will show you what it looks like to be inside a live session. There are going to be a couple different appearances based on the session types, but for today's example, we will give the example of a poster or paper session, and then we will give the example of a symposium. We'll start with the poster and paper session. So as Felice just mentioned, if you would like to access a live session, all you have to do is click the blue play button to the left of the title of the session, and that will take you directly into that particular live location. So when you're going to a paper or poster session, you will be prompted to enter the way you want your name to appear when you join. And then at the bottom center of the screen, there's a blue icon that says join meeting. So I'm going to quickly turn off my video on Zoom so I can use it on the platform and show you what it looks like here. And you can see here that my colleagues are also already logged in. So this is going to be an appropriate setting for the sessions that are going to have more interaction. You can see that everyone can be on video and microphone. There's also going to be the ability to have a chat box window 
So anyone can also communicate via text. Whoever the presenter is, if they had content to share, as Felice mentioned before, it could be a tab on your screen or you could share a PowerPoint presentation that can be done right here in the platform. So Mackenzie is showing the example of sharing her screen right now, which has now taken up the full view. So if this were your presentation, you can click through all the slides and this would be right here. If your screen wasn't a PowerPoint, but it was another tab, it would look the same way for the attendees from our perspective. Thank you for your demonstration, Mackenzie. If you at any time wanted to change your view, at the bottom right hand side, there's an option to toggle your view. So you can change whoever you would like to be full screen. You can change it so that the content is full screen. You have full control. So we will leave this session and show you the example of what the symposium is going to look like next. We're back in the main virtual conference center and we're on the agenda screen so now we're going to click into the symposium demonstration and you'll see that it looks a little bit different the symposium platform is going to look different because it's more catered towards having the presenters be the main speaker and the audience use the chat box as their main method of communication the first thing I would encourage everyone to do is locate the top toolbar and over to the right hand side, there's an icon that says full view, and that will allow you to see your screen a little bit more clearly. So now we can still see that presenters are on the screen and in the bottom right hand corner, there's a blue chat box. So as the attendee, you can still continue to communicate with the presenters just as you are now by texting your question. If you click on the private tab on the right hand side, you can have a more one on one conversation with other attendees if you chose to. And the presenters will still be able to share slides or videos, whatever content they choose. If you're within a symposium or another large session and they decide to have a smaller table session to continue the conversation in smaller groups, in the top toolbar, you will be able to locate where those sessions are. So right now you'll see a screen in the middle that looks like the agenda, but they're all breakouts. These breakouts or table sessions are only going to be those that apply to the main room you're in now. So for this example, the symposium that we're in has smaller tables to move to to continue the conversation. And all these table sessions will be set for that specific symposium that you're attending. It's the same functionality with clicking the blue play button to go into the table session that you choose to be participating in. Felice, do you have anything to add to the symposium platform or should we open it up for questions at this time? So oh, hi, this is Tony. I'm going to jump. Yeah. I'm going to jump in with a question. Yeah, good. Uh, someone has asked whether um, attendees would be able to stream multiple sessions simultaneously. So with your login, you will only be able to go into one session at a time. That is a very good question. But but to further answer it, we're going to have all of these sessions recorded. So once the recording is uploaded into the virtual conference center, I'm back in the lobby on the screen and at the top toolbar, there's an icon that says on demand. So any sessions that have been recorded that took place live and are now available for you to go back and review or watch, they will be listed in on demand. So you won't be able to attend all the live sessions because a lot will be taking place at the same time, of course but you will be able to go back and watch the ones that you would like to review. It just won't be a live version. Yeah, and, and I suppose unlike a place-based meeting, you can exit one and enter the other, but you do not have a multiple screen capacity of, of, uh, uh, of being able to, I suppose, essentially watch two at the same time. We are- That's correct, uh, Felice. Right. And, and you could always click back up into the main toolbar at the top and click today's events and move into a different live session 
in real time if you chose to do that. We are, we are recording the session so that um, for two reasons, one to be um, accessible um, uh, and, and viewable to attendees, um, all attendees, and also uh, for persons with uh, disabilities who may then want to view um, more at their, or here with a reader, more at their own pace. We have a worldwide community that also will be able to have access at various points in the clock time. The library is essentially that recorded capacity. The, I saw some questions about, um, can that be downloaded by others? The answer is no. When um, uh, Robert Smith, our meetings director said last week that this is AERA's asset, we were not referring to your content. Your content is your content. We were referring to the entire virtual experience. Only registrants can come to the meeting and only registrants will be able to view it after the meeting for a period of time. Scarrett will have it on a essentially a firewalled platform that has servers under, underlying it that will be a much more stable environment than anything else you've experienced. Of course, everything depends on what your own access and bandwidth is to a certain extent, but you will not have additional glitch. There is none of the you know, bombing and entering rooms and creating the kinds of disruptions that many of us have experienced. Um, so the on-demand and then the, the uh, uh, existence of this platform only for registrants for what we have discussed with Scarrett would be up to the beginning of the uh, next annual meeting is an asset for those who have indeed uh, busy, busy work lives and things on your menu, parent care, child care, bandwidth that is so difficult at this time. You can in, in July or in August view any sessions that you feel you missed or that subsequently heard about. Um, you can experience them by going back into what is essentially an asset that your registration provides. It's not a five day meeting. It's a meeting that has a much longer tail for you, but only for registrants. Are there any other questions that have come in? Um, a couple of people have asked about how poster presentations will occur. I could say briefly and then, uh, uh, Rachel, do you have that room, th those three room visuals available? So, sure, let me uh, pull those up for you, please. If you've done a poster, if you, well, if you attend <laughs> a poster presentation, think about that perimeter around a poster as essentially being your own room. So every poster that might have been in a grand ballroom is essentially a single room. If you are attending a poster session and you arrive at the beginning, then the presenter will be able to talk with you. You will be able to scan. If you use the interactive presentation, you'll be ab actually able to scan the whole poster at the same, in the same way you would, except it's a much more dynamic uh, product. So behind you, that's the visual of someone entering a poster room. If you get there early, you will see the visual. Uh, if you arrive at the time it begins or a few minutes after it begins, the the authors, which may be several authors, will essentially be in that um, square that can be elongated to full screen. Right, Rachel, is that right? Can be open to full screen. With You'll still see the suggestion of that perimeter of this being a, 
a single location. Think of it as your um, three by five square feet of walking up to a poster and there's a table and one or two people There can be, I think with ease, more than one author. And then that uh, uh, those authors, if they use the interactive presentation, they can have the full view of their slides, including whether it's a PowerPoint. But typically a poster presenter will not start talking until there are persons there or they'll answer questions or they will allow an attendee to, not allow, but you will, an attendee will scan the poster and that will be on a shared screen, um, essentially in the form, I think ideally for that of an interactive presentation. And then you will ask questions. If six of you are there at the same time, the, auth you know, the, the authors will have the latitude of saying, well, let me give you a little overview. And so the presenter will kind of calibrate what they do based on who comes up to the poster. Sometimes one starts a live poster session and there's no one there for 15, 20 minutes and then two or three people might walk over. So the, the presenter will interact with the attendee in the same way. And if the attendee comes in and, and the presenter happens to be talking or the author or authors happen to be talking, you will be just as you would experience in a Zoom meeting, you will be brought in and there. Um, it's a small group, you can have your video on, but if, um, if you choose not to, you can just, uh, it, will be up, it will be known to the presenter uh, how many persons are there and that somebody's just entered and say, hey, do you have any additional questions? Do you want me to start at the beginning? This room is what a paper session room will look like. So this is what we call a small theater, uh, 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 a, a small, I should say, a small theater style setup, you know, that's the theater style rows of chairs, um, hopefully with greater uh, um, extra wide access in the, in the middle. The paper presenters will follow all the guidance that we give every year, nothing new about that. You know, we ask, we ask AERAs uh, as a matter of policy, our annual meeting policy and procedures committee many, many years ago reaffirmed and our council that do not read a paper, do not read a paper. If you, persons, if you have your paper in the online paper repository can get it. If you are, uh, but you're presenting in one way or another, you can do so by, by uh, taking from your browser, your interactive presentation, if you choose to do that. If you choose to show no visuals, you can do that. If you choose to do Prezi, you can do that and you just share screen. Usually in the paper session, uh, each presenter uh, presents in turn with a max typically of eight to 10 minutes, that's up to the chair and organizer, but that's what is typical. If you are presenting in more than one language, you, you just as we offer guidance that you share that so that half of it is in English. That's true of even presenting a, creating a, uh, a PowerPoint or a presentation in the interactive gallery. If you arrive in that room, you'll kind of have that feeling. Now I'm walking into a theater style paper session. And then the, the, on, at, on the appointed hour, let's say 1040 for the first paper session, it's an hour and a half, uh, the screen will open. All of, the, all, of the paper present, uh, all of the paper authors will be essentially on squares on in the viewing area and then the chair will make some opening remarks. Each of you will talk in turn for the all allotted period and that's what you'll be experiencing as an attendee. The round table looks like a round table. So, so there's a, there is there um, is um, audio as well as uh, 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 visual cueing. The round table, uh, Rachel, can you flip to that? Sure. The round table is a kind of a conference room style table. If you arrive early, uh, you've, you've, <laughs> uh, you've already had your informal uh, meetups in networking space um, and you've arrived early, uh, you will see something that looks like a 
round table of which that's not the format, but it'll look more like a round table. You're an attendee. Uh, at the time of that round table, um, the, um, uh, the, those who are discussing their papers yeah. together will, uh, will already be there at the time of the round table. They will talk in a moderated discussion about their work. They are not to, as you know, they are encouraged not to do what they would do in a paper session because that's not the purpose of a round table, but that's no different. There's nothing about the platform that um, I'll say legislates, mandates uh, what are considered the best practices for a round table versus a paper session uh, versus a poster session. Uh, that is what we organically are committed to as a community of scholars within the annual meeting. That will unfold. Those who are sitting around that round table who have joined as the audience will have their mics on and can have their videos on and will be able to interact just as you would in a small um, in a small meeting as, as Rachel um, has demonstrated. Hopefully that helps also the presenter understand a little bit about that. You don't, if you are a presenter, you do not need to worry about finding your location. You will be brought to your location by virtue of the way that all academic and Scarrett are communicating. You will be brought to that location 10 minutes before the start of your session so that the chair uh, can make some you know, last minute comments to all of you. You can all do the mic checking that when, when Rachel just asked Felice, do you have something to say at the end of her presentation? And Choni thankfully jumped in because I was talking and I noticed my mic was off. <laughs> so you'll do all of those reminders to yourselves if you're a presenter and the attendee in each of those experiences will be feeling something that is quite equivalent, we hope, and in certain respects, um, um, much more accessible uh, than place-based meetings uh, can be. For symposia that are large, um, uh, uh, Rachel uh, mentioned using the Q&A and the chats, and uh, for large symposia, our SIGs and our divisions are uh, designating a, an additional role that of course you would not have at a place-based meeting. And that is that there will be um, uh, essentially a Q&A moderator who will be doing what Tony is doing and be the voice of many more Q, uh, questions than otherwise might happen in a symposium of 250 or 350 persons. So it's a new role in the virtual location where lots of hands up would be difficult to track. And, uh, and that will be um, a designated role, just like a chair role or a commentator role is. And those individuals are uh, being asked to undertake that role. That information will be shared with Scarrett and those, that form of presentation, which we'll be discussing on Thursday and next Monday for presenters is an additional a built in role for the very large sessions that are more webinar in reality than they are in using the Zoom language, which we actually in many respects prefer not to do, but Zoom language of webinar and meeting. Rachel, Tony? Uh, we have a question about um, the data policy regarding chats or video calls within the platform. The data policy? Yes, uh, someone is asking, what is the data policy regarding chats or video calls within the platform? I'm not, I'm not sure I quite understand the, the question about data policy because I don't anticipate that the, uh, that modality will be used for uh, data display. Any display of data um, that you present uh, is yours, <laughs> whether in a formal session or informal session. If you are showing, let's say you've done, um, uh, that you've done, uh, that you've used some extant data set, you want to be sure that, um, that your 
not showing anything capable of deductive disclosure. If you are doing a presentation of a, of a video of um, uh, a teacher-student interaction, you need to be sure if that's within your, uh, within your research that uh, you have, um, um, you know, you have permissions to use it in this way. Uh, uh, for those who are viewing it, whether they are viewing uh, a place-based meeting, um, someone cannot, I suppose, if they do, ARA has very strong standards with respect to plagiarism, falsification, and fabrication. So if you have concerns about plagiarism um, in live modalities or in this recorded modality, uh, uh, there is no downloading capacity of your, um, uh, of your data. <laughs> uh, if someone took a screenshot of something you projected live, any abuse of that without, um, uh, without your permission and appropriate citation uh, would be an issue for raising um, uh, with uh, your executive director um, as the ethics officer and the ARA ethics committee that addresses um, issues of um, uh, falsification, fabrication, uh, and misuse of um, the work of others, uh, whether at an annual meeting or whether in publications or any, uh, or workshops or anything else, um, held and conducted under the ARA auspices. I hope that answers your question. I enlarged it because I actually think the question might- So, Felice, yeah. Felice if I could interject. Yeah, I, th I think um, a follow-up question is whether the chats uh, or discussion will be stored uh, by oh. AERA or the oh, platform. Oh, yeah, no, the answer is no. I mean, all the informal networking is informal networking. We're not recording it. The 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 w that's an easier question. I'm I'm thanks, Tony. Uh, the uh, what are, are recorded events or what you would consider to be the program of the association, where where we some years have done fifty or sixty recordings. It's gotten to be so expensive that we've often not done as much as we wish. Uh, so the on-demand library is only for the formal program. We actually have created three spaces for informal networking during the meeting with no sessions at all, a half hour at the beginning of the meeting, an hour with nothing else going on, and, be, um, and then another half hour before business meetings and social hours at the events. In the one hour band, ARA will be offering a number of networking tables where uh, each day where persons can find topics of interest to them and join you know, semi-structured uh, networking opportunities, but you can, use, you can use your chat function anytime you want, including in the, those free spaces to hang out with others and there is no recording or preservation of, of um, of that uh, data, uh, nor will it be archived by AERA when we just for historical purposes archive and no longer, uh, no longer present the annual meeting. A few people have asked uh, when they would be able to access the platform um, just to uh, try it out. Yeah, I'm gonna let, uh, 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 Asia and Rachel answer that. I just want to say, just just for a mindset, it's actually going to open earlier than we ever open pre-registration at the annual meeting. Meaning, um, uh, if you're, uh, I am, uh, in terms of uh, large audience presentations, not the most comfortable speaker in the whole world. That's an overstatement. I'm kind of uncomfortable. And if I'm walking around day zero or day minus one, and I know I'm going to be in that room, and I only wish I could open the room, the room is locked. <laughs> Here, there's going to be much more of an opportunity for you to uh, to do a number of functions in advance. And I'll turn that over to uh, Asia and Rachel. Please. 
Um, so to answer the question, um, the platform will be open several days in advance, um, and you'll receive an email notification. It will also be posted on AERA's website once the platform is open. Um, we are also working to uh, set up a few, I guess, test run or demo sessions that uh, presenters would be able to use. Um, the most important thing to note for presenters or anybody that's going to be speaking in the session um, is going to be that um, just as you would with uh, a face-to-face -face meeting, if you have a group or a co-panelist or a co-presenter, you're going to want to take time outside of the platform to make sure that um, your session is thoroughly planned and and you're you're passing off, you know, presenter, you know, who's talking and, and who's going to be sharing the screen. That's all things that you're going to still need to do. This platform is not going to uh, curate that for you. So if you have somebody that you're presenting with, I encourage you to take some time before. Um, and then when you come into your session, whether um, it is uh, the smaller modality that we showed, which is the first one, so more like a paper session or a poster session, round tables will also be in that environment. Um, you'll want to have that very clearly worked out when you come into that, um, that session. And then you can share your screen if you wish, or maybe you're just camera and you're having a um, that interaction. So we are uh, quickly working to finish the build out of the platform. As you can see, some areas are under construction. So you will be notified as soon as you're able to get into the platform um, and really um, get comfortable with it. Rachel, I'll turn it over to you if you have anything to add. No, Asia, nothing to add. Um, your audio is mostly clear, but just in case some people missed the part about rehearsing if there were multiple speakers, we recommend that as you would for a face-to-face, -face, coordinate with your other speakers before you log into the platform for your session. One of you will be able to screen share. And then if you want to determine between the two of you who's navigating the slides throughout the entire presentation, that will allow it to run the smoothest. And we're happy to give you other suggestions if you have any questions. Is there another question that we have time to go over, Tony? Rachel, I want to underscore that, that particular point, and that is the ways in which you communicate for a symposium session or a paper session together before the meeting, <laughs> it doesn't mean necessarily, you know, before uh, April 8th, but if, if you are doing something on the 11th and you're likely to have lunch together on the 9th, you need to arrange that same kind of conversation with session participants as you would ordinarily. And that's of course very important. There's a, um, a rhythm, right? We, we were on uh, yesterday talking about this session to at least create some rhythm of the issues that we wanted to emphasize, the, how, what we wanted to offer you, this you know, a spontaneity of which we love only goes so far when you want uh, the attendee to have a particularly engaging opportunity with you. So the ways in which a chair or organizer might ask you on, you know, on uh, March 28th, can we schedule getting together? All of that getting together among, among those on a session together um, should, you know, should happen just as in the normal course of events. There's no substitute. <laughs> a great platform can't, um, can't substitute for a lack of comfort about how you're going to do what you want to do uh, as you would do in a place-based meeting. Tony? Um, someone has asked about um, training for roundtable presentations. Um, this may not be the place to delve into that, um, but will that be Will that be uh, discussed in the next training session later this week for presenters? I think we'll talk about, uh, yes, we'll, we'll cover um, uh, what persons as, at roundtables do. Let me say that that modality is um, a lot of what we will say in brief is, is to emphasize some things that are intended to be different about roundtables from paper sessions. Some of that uh, remains absolutely constant since the reforms of the roundtable in 2010. Um, 
the year we were in Denver and Carol Lee was president of ARA. ARA Council adopted a number of reforms in 2009. Uh, and one of the core ones was to make for a more lively interaction and exchange among paper givers around the table with common and shared interests. And it is not an opportunity to go around the table and give many long presentations as you would in a, um, a paper session mode. So yes, we'll talk about that and anyone who is, um, uh, how you will get there, how you might prepare. Uh, but I think it is that and, and really all the motifs are an effort to show you what will happen in virtual space to be as, as harmonized uh, with how, uh, with the experiences that you were intending when you submitted a paper and you said, uh, or you and your co-authors and you checked off, uh, you would be interested in any of the three modalities, paper session, coaster session, or round table. Some check off only round table, some check off only poster, some check off only paper session, and some check off two. Uh, uh, those descriptors we will repost um, and, and that are in the call for submissions and have been uh, AERA descriptions of those modalities, as I said, since the 2010 reforms. And we hope that those who attend a round table really enjoy the opportunity of coming around the table with those who did papers in these areas for sharing their ideas in brief and then engaging in an interaction with those of you attending ostensibly interested in that area or maybe even doing research in that same area. Someone has asked whether you could uh, demo the uh, format for receptions. I think that uh, Rachel can uh, it's, uh, pull that up or describe, she and Asia can describe the experience. Uh, the one thing I wanna do after that question is answered is, um, uh, I do wanna talk about and give a time for introducing what accessibility means for um, uh, persons with disabilities and also what that means for those of, uh, of us who may not avail ourselves of disability access provisions to be inclusive in, uh, to other attendees and to other uh, presenters. So let's answer that experiential question without um, my doing the overview with Rachel or Asia doing that overview or Robert. And then, um, and then let's, uh, let, let us introduce um, Emily into that conversation and then we'll still have time for general and specific questions. Yes, to answer the question about the receptions, we don't currently have um, anything we can demo right now, but it will look similar to what you've been seeing for the other types of sessions, but the communication with attendees and presenters will all be through text. Asia, is there anything you wanna to add to the question about what the receptions are going to look like? Asia, do you have that one slide, uh, the PowerPoint slide, or will that interfere with your presentation here? It should be somewhere, the one with the bench. I can look for that while you're speaking, Asia. Okay. While Rachel pulls that up, um, yes, yeah, so basically uh, to summarize, any live portion of a session, whether it's a reception, a poster, or will be um, operated through one of the two modalities we've shown. So obviously the first one we've shown was more um, intimate. Everybody can kind of be on camera and speaking freely, um, whereas the larger one is um, able to function a little bit of, of both, where maybe you have just a presenter on um, and maybe you only want interaction later. Um, however, receptions will also have the option for smaller tables, much like you would in a face-to-face um, -face, uh, reception. So the functionality will be similar to where when you go into that main large, let's call it a ballroom, for example, um, you go into that large room, maybe there's a quick, you know, welcome, um, and then you will have the option to uh, go up to that top toolbar um, and select other tables. Um, and you can move freely 
throughout the tables and, and network and communicate as you would, um, as close to as we could uh, replicate for a face-to-face. -face. Rachel, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, let me, let me just amplify what it might look like for a business meeting uh, slash reception. So let's say it's a, a SIG or uh, a SIG a business meeting. So those who have designated roles like the chair, and it might be the two program chairs or the program chair and the, and the program vice chair, maybe the uh, uh, secretary will be saying a few words. They will come to that session and be brought there 10 minutes early. They, uh, the chair, which in this case would probably be the seat chair, would also have essentially control over others who come on stage. So let's say there's an award winner that you've celebrated and they want to invite that award winner to say a few words. In some cases, sometimes there's someone who's asked to speak and say a few words. That will all happen in this, what we want you to experience as a modern um, um, community space uh, uh, for uh, units that we anticipate will be having business meetings and receptions for under a hundred. Um, so that would be any number of uh, smaller SIGs. You will be experiencing something that's in the essentially the meeting mode in the WebEx or Zoom world in which you may find yourselves um, living. Uh, it'll, this will be a much more, the bench is kind of, oh, we could all sit down at tables, but we're all, look, we're all viewing or, or hearing from one a group for as ever short and long as that business meeting, or if it's only a social event, let's say, at the welcoming reception, you probably have heard me more than you wish already. At the, I might say a few words, uh, Sean Harper, our president might say a few words. Um, uh, we'll congratulate and thank some. And, um, and then, but for whatever that length, there will be essentially at the point at which the chair says, well, let's all have a good social time together and essentially go to your tables. There will be a menu that will appear where, it's a, where it says viewing area and you can pick your table. Um, attendee, as some groups are instituting some games and, they, and there may be some game rooms that will be moderated. Some are just naming the rooms. The units are all determining what that will be. Some, I suppose, are just having open tables, although it really helps to at least know who may be the host of that table or maybe the topic or issues of that table, not a substantive topic, but whatever you all wanna do. So that's gonna vary a lot by how units like to hold their receptions. And then you can just float around those banquet tables as you might do, you know, you sit down with a group and it's on, there's a discussion on X or maybe there are too many people and you don't have an opportunity to say much. And, um, and all of those will essentially be like being in a meeting um, with the expectation that there's not likely to be more than 20 people at a table. So that's the experience. Um, and I hope that that both in words and in at least uh, my description in words of what the visual will appear like, it gives you a feeling that a good time can be had by all, as my mother would have said. Uh, I think we should maybe turn it over to Emily, and then that'll give us a chance also to regroup and take some additional questions. Emily? Hello, everybody. My name is Emily Badix. I'm going to start oh, sharing my screen as soon as Garrett groups allow or takes theirs down. Thank you. So I have been brought on as a uh, access consultant. I am the associate director at the Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State. Um, a quick audio description of myself. I'm a white woman in my late 30s with some curly, messy hair and a, a bookshelf behind me today. Um, my presentation is 
uh, my, the first slide says attendee access at AERA with gratitude to the Disability Studies and Education Special Interest Group for their advocacy. On, it, on top of their academic charge, they have done a lot of work in the past several years advocating for access um, at AR, AERA and providing a lot of resources and ideas about what it looks like. Before I dive into sharing a little bit, um, and I, I do want to say if people were on the town hall, this will be largely repetitive, but we're just trying to get make sure everybody gets access to the same information. Um, before diving into the specific details of what sort of access features you can count on this year, um, I want to celebrate something that we try to draw attention to in, in our work, um, which is that this isn't just about supporting people with disabilities, although first and foremost, that, that is why we're doing it and why we should do it. Um, but there may be many people that end up benefiting from these access features. We call that the curb cut effect. And that's because uh, there's a slide image right now that shows a curb cut being, you know, which is intended and built for wheelchair riders being used by a parent with a stroller, just as travelers with rolly suitcases use them and, uh, you know, bicycles and skateboarders. Um, I think that you'll discover that that's the case with online access at a conference. While we're um, encouraging our presenters to do things like audio describe their slideshow so that a blind, low vision person can participate, um, it's going to be great if you have to walk away from the screen for a moment, but you still have an idea of what's going on, or um, you, uh, you know, just need to do your dishes while you, somebody's presenting. Not that I'm encouraging that, of course. Okay, so on to the details of the work that AARA has, uh, you know, provide is planning to provide for this year's conference, and this is building on, you know, a lot of access work that they were already doing, but that they're trying to sort of increase uh, this year. Um, the pacing is set up to support taking care of your bodies and minds. They intentionally put in breaks throughout the day, um, and on top of it, and I'm, I'm jumping to a later point. The fact that all the sessions will be recorded and provided in an on-demand library after is also really a valuable access tool that means that people who can't just sort of sit in a chair for all those hours um, can still find ways to engage and, and access this content. Um, all participants are expected to present following access guidelines, and we're doing uh, more detailed information um, as part of the presenter um, trainings and, and chair trainings coming up. Um, but uh, on top of it, um, we're going to provide guidelines and, and tip sheets and, and ways to try and make this as easy as possible. Um, the platform, uh, the Scarrett Group has informed us, is a screen reader accessible platform. Um, ASL interpreters will be easily visible um, and captioning will be, uh, there will be ASL and live captioning at all plenaries, symposia, lectures, business meetings, and receptions. And they will be relying on AI captions, which um, have recently taken a, a very big step forward from what they were for many years. If you've ever seen the sort of auto captions on YouTube, they've gotten a lot better, but they're still, you know, not quite as uh, high quality as having a live captioner. And those are going to be available at all poster, paper, round table sessions, and banquet tables. Now, if you know that you are giving a paper your, or a, a poster session or any of these things that are AI and you are hearing impaired or deaf or you know you want to go to one of these sessions and you're, you're very committed to it, you can put in an access request to have a live captioner or ASL at one of these sessions if you um, don't feel comfortable relying on the AI captions. Um, I'll be ending my presentation today with the email address of, you know, these are now open, you can make a request by email. You also have the option of, um, oh, I have a child joining me today. Um, you have a, uh, you can make a request for floats um, for any impromptu needs that may come up. Um, so we're gonna have just a couple of ASL interpreters. You know, it's not a huge number. We can't guarantee that it's gonna be available, but we'll have a number of 
ASL interpreters and captioners available that, you know, say um, your group of presenters is about to meet and you really want to, it's sort of a last minute thrown together, you're going to have a video chat as a group and you want an ASL interpreter, you'll be able to make that request just sort of say, hey, is one of the floats available? I really need access in order to participate in this. Um, so hopefully that will provide an extra layer of access. Um, all presentations, PowerPoint, and multimedia need to be accessible. We're going to also provide tips on how to how to set up eye presentations so that alt text is in there for blind, low vision folks, um, big fonts, all of that. I'm not going into much detail about that today because we're we're doing that more with the presenters, and this is geared at attendees. Um, and also we're really encouraging chairs and presenters to just think through like a different pacing and strategy and how they run these sessions because online that sort of fast moving conversation when somebody jumps in and jumps in on top of each other that just doesn't lead to good access and so we're really encouraging our chairs and presenters to think about access in, in the whole way that we create an accessible culture in this conference. The ASL and captioners are going to have access to review the papers in advance to prepare. That's part of why those um, papers are submitted in advance. And um, there will be access support uh, as well as ombuds available throughout the entire conference. So if you have a concern, if something isn't being met, you can go to that help desk and share your concerns. And hopefully it won't be too late to do some troubleshooting. With all that said, you know, there's no such thing as 100% access at any point. Um, access is messy work, um, but we're trying our best to learn. And, um, you know, please get in touch if you foresee problems that we haven't talked about and, and we, can, we can learn more from you and help. Um, the email that you're going to want, if you have any uh, specific access requests, in particular, if you are going to need um, a ASL interpreter, or a captioner on top of uh, one of the sessions that did, has AI captioning, you can reach out now at access at AERA.net. Once again, that's access at AERA.net. Um, so that's live today. And there's just going to be more tips and resources for if you're a presenter or a chair coming soon. So look out for that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Tony or uh, Nathan, are there some general issues? We still have a few minutes and we'd love to entertain any questions directed to Scarrett or to Emily, to Robert or me or. It looks like we've addressed all the questions that we've received in Q&A. Nathan, are you seeing anything else? I think, as Tony said, I think everything has been addressed or either answered live or answered in the Q&A chats. All right. Any of my colleagues on the panel, Asia, Rachel, Emily, Robert, anything else that we want to drive home before I end? Nothing to add from our end. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I, I mainly then want to end by thanking everyone for uh, attending. Uh, uh, I I suppose I want to say with all of our heart, we really want this virtual opportunity for you to work for our community, to be a pathway along the way to all the ways we hope that in this terrible pernicious time of multiple pandemics, that, uh, that AERA is a safe space, a safe haven for scholarly exchange, for connecting and communicating with those who will remain parts of your professional work and lives for many years to come. And that we know we will do our job well when after this virtual opportunity together, uh, you look forward to rejoining with us in San Diego in 2022, benefiting from all we have learned in this uh, virtual preparation period. So thank you all for coming and come back early and often and continue to raise the questions that make us do better 
in the ways that you have over any number of months and weeks. And thank my colleagues. And our ASL is still working <laughs> and our closed captioners who've been with us so effectively really since it's hard to imagine that this journey is now over a year old and, and uh, we've benefited in so many ways by so many of you. So thank you and, and we hope that the rest of your day, evening, early morning or middle of the night uh, go as well and as uh, peacefully and as collaboratively and supportively as possible.